Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles Sabans. We want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and where we give you guys a first perspective on things. And now we see them. And today we got a list of shows here for you guys here today. Uh, but before we get into it, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Now, today must be Stephen A. Smith Day because we got a lot, a lot of different things that we want to cover um, from the recent sit down that he had with Paul George on the Paul George uh, podcast. Now, Quick context, about a few months ago, actually, during the regular season, and this is something we covered, uh, actually towards the end of the playoffs, Kawhi Leonard had gotten injured in game one of the playoffs, and he played in game two. After game two, we found out that he wasn't going to be available for the remainder of the playoffs, and I, as a Kawhi Leonard fan, uh, was extremely disappointed, and a lot of people gave their thoughts. Amongst the people that gave their thoughts, the most vo- the most vocal person on this on uh, the Kawhi Leonard situation was uh, Stephen A. Smith himself. He went on television and he essentially said that Kawhi Leonard is the worst superstar in sports history. He said that he should just think of retiring already. He also said that um, he does absolutely nothing for the Clippers. Um, and he said, you could, you couldn't go a little bit. You couldn't try to go a little bit into the series, like give it a shot. And then him and JJ Reddick had a blow up about this on TV. Then on the Paul George podcast, they were discussing that. And essentially, excuse me, what happened was Jackie Long, who's on the panel with Paul George basically said, who is Stephen A. Smith to be even discussing basketball at this level? And then Paul George concurred with, uh, Jackie Long. So what happened? Stephen A. Smith heard these comments and then on the Stephen A. Smith podcast about, I'll say three weeks ago or so, he addressed both Paul George and Jackie Long and he went on a pretty, pretty, pretty long uh, tirade. And then he said, all you had to do was just ask me to come on your podcast. So what happened yesterday, uh, Paul George and these guys drop, uh, uh, what is it, an episode and this episode was featuring Stephen A. Smith. And the episode, as a matter of fact, was is doing very well. I think it's already at half a million views uh, in 15 or 12 or so hours. So a lot of people are interested in that. So I decided to go watch it to see what would happen. And I think that's why a lot of people wanted to go see how it would go down, especially given the fact that they had this back and forth on their various shows. So then I clicked on the podcast. And funny enough, from the onset, That was the very first thing that was addressed. Now, it's a very long show, and there are a lot of different things that we want to get to in various shows today. So what we want to do is want to focus on this particular exchange. Now, before we play it, I want to say that Stephen A. Smith came on there with with a a lot of energy, and you could tell that um, he wasn't there to back down or anything. And you can tell, like he was the one that kind of owned that interview. So what we want to do is we want to play exactly what he said, to Paul George, to Jackie Long, and it's a bit a bit windy, but I want you guys to listen to it in its entirety, and this is us actually condensing it for you guys, and then we'll come back and react to it. So take a listen to that there. Together. Sure. Just just stop, Pete. Right, stop. Right. Just stop. <laughs> stop. 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 Right. First of all, how could I ever have beef with Stephen A. Smith? It's a legend. First of all, I don't, I know who Stephen A. Smith is, but I don't know Stephen A. Smith to have beef. Right. Okay. If anything... From me, all I want to know is how can I learn from Stephen A. Smith? Mm -hmm. This is one of the greatest journalists, the greatest analysts of all time. Mm -hmm. Why would I sit back and have beef with a man that I need to learn for? I'm not going to act the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Our show is a family-based home, and we don't have interviews. We have conversations. Right. Right. And that's what I'm here today to have with you to have a conversation sure. and learn all that stuff. I can go on the Stephen A. Smith show right. and we can talk about that and have some fun. <laughs> right. I can bring you a gift. <laughs> but might, to, but be careful because I might want one. Listen, <laughs> I might want one. <laughs> I, will bring, I will honestly bring, bring right. you a gift. But right. here, right. we right. like our guests to honestly feel welcome, right. feel comfortable. And at the end of the day, we get to honor Stephen A. Smith. Right. They can talk all they want to in the comments, all this. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm the greatest at ignoring stuff. Right. But man, it is an honor and a pleasure to have you, you here mm-hmm. with us. Thanks so much. I man. am glad that you came. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Sherry McGee. Mm-hmm. I love her to death. And man, we we really is a a, a show that likes to be nosy. Yep. You know, <laughs> we like to be nosy. <laughs> and with, like you right, said, right, right. you have an amazing, huge resume. Right. And we want to just ask you questions. Sure. How you started that resume? And right. look. 
being an actor, yeah. I'm here to actually take notes today. <laughs> <laughs> because, because I know it's something that I'm gonna learn right, from you. Right, right. And, and it, like yeah. I said, man, I this love is, it. This I love this it. Is good. Yeah. This is good. So I'm here. Right. 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 No doubt. First of all, first, first of all, you're absolutely right. I appreciate what you said to the audience because there was nothing to be angry about or anything like that. The only part that I addressed was when you said he shouldn't be talking about any, because he didn't play professional sports, he shouldn't be talking about mm -hmm. anybody's injuries or anything like that. And I'm like, hold up. Right. Can't do that. Because most cats in this business didn't play professional sports. Mm -hmm. And most cats that did play professional sports ain't gonna be fortunate enough to be in this business. So where does that leave us? Mm -hmm. And when you think about the challenges that black folks have faced in this nation when it comes to journalism, this is one of the things, when I talk about my resume, I don't talk about it to brag, I talk about it to highlight the obstacles I had to overcome to get to where I am. Mm -hmm. Because what I'm saying, there's only a few of us who've done it. Obviously, many, many, many more deserved it but they got squashed. Mm -hmm. right. And so a lot of times when we're talking about each other, I'm sitting there saying, yo, man, disagree. Tell me what. So that was the only point that I was making with you. What I was saying to you, mm -hmm. because it was both of y'all. Mm -hmm. I brought, I'm I brought up. I love what, I was, I'm ready. what I was saying, what I was saying <laughs> to Paul George, first of all, understand this. See, when it, this is the thing. When you're somebody like PG, you point to the injuries. You never look at his game and went like this. He don't deserve his money. You look at his game and go like, that. he deserves his money, but yo, bro, you got to get it done. But you know his game mm -hmm. right. deserves the money. Mm -hmm. I've been one that obviously, you know me, numerous players and, you know, most recently a Kyrie or Russell Westbrook, but you ain't never heard me say they don't deserve their money. That's right. never come out of my mouth, okay? Because, and not only that, I usually don't talk about people's money until after you sign on the dotted line because I want all the brothers to get paid. And then after they get paid, I'll be like, all right, now, now you know you lucked up, right? Because you did that, damn it. You know, Anthony Davis, your new contract. Look, bro, I love AD. Love AD. Talked to his daddy during the playoffs. I know he was a bit sensitive to what I was saying. Love AD as a person. Love him as a player. $62 million. $62 million. Let me tell you something, bro. His talent is worth it. His consistency is not. He will show up one day. He will not show up the next. I agree. He will drop 40 in game one, 11 in game two. I agree. Now me, I'd much rather have you averaging 28 to 30, night in, night out, rather than each and every night. It's like the damn roller coaster. I mean, you had Charles Barkley calling him street clothes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I never called them that. I called them six flags. Street six I called flags. them six flags. Great adventure. It is a roller coaster. It's a roller coaster ride because he's up and down, up and down, up and down. But I got mad respect for his game. I know he's one of the elite players to to in this game today. Yep. But the consistency is not there. So when people will be like, "Well, you know what? He's a little bit upset." I'm like, "Where he at? Where he at?" You know, I'm not gonna sit up there and argue with him in front of other people. But I would have went up to him and said, "Yo, bro, I said you're not consistent." I didn't say you was a scrub. I didn't say you can't play or whatever. You know good and damn well you're not consistent. Now, you can sit up there and talk all you want. I don't give a damn how great Jokic is. And he is great. Don't tell me you can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. You AD. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. If you dedicate it. And that's another thing we don't talk about enough. There's certain cats that want it. And there's certain cats that just want the limelight and the salary that comes with it and the lifestyle. Yep. The people that I revere are those who want it. So you heard the exchange between these guys. Here are my thoughts. First of all, I was a bit surprised to see the angle that Jackie Long took. He seemed very remorseful. He seemed very respectful. He was giving Stephen A. Smith a lot of reverence. Um, and I understand that. I don't, I think Stephen A. Smith addressed his point, the point that um, uh, Jackie Long made. I don't think Jackie Long explained his position to Stephen A. Smith during that sit down. I wish uh, we would have had an opportunity to see him kind of give his own side. Uh, but Stephen A. Smith wasn't dodging any of his questions. He, you know, he answered everything head on. He even discussed Paul George uh, and things like this. You could definitely see that. Stephen A. Smith took over the podcast when he came because he was the one that did the majority of the talking. And I guess that's, that's how it's supposed to be. It wasn't conversational. And I think the reason it was like that was simply this. 
usually uh, what happens on Paul George's show is that he generally brings on current and ex-athletes. And athletes have a certain rapport with one another, with one another that they don't have with traditional personalities in the media. And you could see it there, right? It wasn't this ha ha ha, chummy chummy. It was none of that. So I think that's the reason you saw that disconnect there. But however, I do think it was a successful uh, show because ultimately I think they were able to gain what it is they wanted, which was to understand exactly where Stephen A. Smith was coming from. And throughout that entire interview, Paul George at various moments, especially towards the end, made his position pretty clear as to why he feels the way that he feels uh, towards the media in general. So overall, I thought it was a successful podcast. But when I said when we put in the title checks, Stephen A. Smith, I think he definitely let those brothers know where he was coming from and he seemed unafraid he didn't seem you know some people when you can say certain things on um and this is a reoccurring reoccurring comment i saw about that exchange online about this particular exchange was a lot of people are saying it, you it's one thing to have the energy when you're you know talking on the internet or talking over the phone it's another thing when you're face to face and the energy definitely shifted it definitely shifted uh, in Stephen A. Smith's favor. So uh, he pretty much let him know he was coming from. And I thought that it was pretty impressive that they were able to actually bring him on somebody that they had this back and forth with. And Paul George reached out to him is like, OK, come on the show. So overall, I thought it was a, su a successful uh, show. So what I want to know for you guys is simply this. What do you think about the exchange? Is there anything you wanted uh, you would wish would have been said during that exchange about that specific topic? Whatever you guys think, please give your thoughts in the comment section and we catch you on the next show. Peace.